what we're doing is putting some natural material in a container that we can close off. So I'm going to loosely pack this in there. I don't want to make it too tight because I want all of it to be able to be cooked, if you will. So now I can reintroduce air and take a look at what I have. And this char looks great. It's completely black. It's very light, fluffy, and delicate. Hey everybody, this is Josh here, the Great Bird of Green Beret. Just wanted to take a minute and welcome you back to the series. Hope you're enjoying it. If you want to get a copy of all the gear that I use throughout this series, you can get a free downloadable packing list. I'll put that link in the description below. Also, if you're enjoying this series and you want to get the full film commercial free and all together, not broken up over the next several weeks, you can purchase the film still from my website. You can stream it. You can get it on your very own USB thumb drive, which is pretty handy. Replaces the download or you can get it on a three disc DVD set. Highly recommend you add those so that you can get the full experience of watching everything together. If you like this series, you like the film, I'd encourage you to get my book. Everything that you see me do in the Into the Woods series and a heck of a lot more is all packed inside this book. And you can get this from my website, you can get it on Amazon. I'll put all the links in the description below. Click those get the film, get the book, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Into the Woods. So when we're looking at getting our first fire in any type of emergency or really any situation whatsoever, a good habit to get into is kind of uh, conservation of your resources as well as preparing for what you don't have with what you do have. So. When I established my first fire, that kind of next fire mentality that I want to be thinking about is, you know, whatever ignition source I used to get this first fire, I wanna make every subsequent fire after this that much easier. So there are some things that you can do. Now, obviously in an emergency, in an emergency it's not the time to start relying on friction fire. You go with your shore flame techniques, which is your Bic lighter, or your stormproof matches if you're in conditions uh, like I have up in the mountains in Adirondacks in the winter, you know, 40 mile an hour winds, uh, really cold, blowing snow. These are really hard to protect uh, and get a fire going. So those stormproof matches work really well for that. Uh, but this is a limited resource. Uh, so if you can do some things to kind of extend the life of this lighter, you should. Uh, but for an emergency, I want that sure flame right now get this thing going so I can get my clothes dried out, get my body warmed up, whatever the case may be. Uh, so I'm gonna go with something like that and I'm gonna go with an emergency tinder most likely. Uh, it's not the time to you know, run around and start looking for other resources after you just fell through the ice into a lake. But this is basically a cotton round that's been dipped in an accelerant and then that is dropped into some wax to seal it. All right, so these work really well with any ignition source except for solar. Um, but what you do with these is just kind of rip those open and really expose all these fine little fibers. And that's what's gonna take, and that wax that's coated around this not only makes it waterproof, but it makes it burn slower. Um, so if I'm trying to get a fire, I'm not messing around with friction fire. I'm going straight to this technique. But again, conservation of resources, I wanna maintain the life of this as much as possible and I want to make every fire after this that much easier. So with that I'm going to use my sure fire and that would be a I shouldn't say sure fire it's a sure flame. It's only a sure fire if you've got the rest of the fire triangle correct uh, but this is a sure flame that you can count on. With this fire I'm going to char material to make my next fire that much easier and typically you know, I'll carry a charring and storage tin. Uh, this one's been through the fire a couple of times, but it happens to be empty now. So char cloth, a lot of folks have heard of, and char cloth is something that I make back in my garage, right? It's, it's not something that I make in the field. I make charred natural tinder or charred natural material in the field. So bringing a tin out empty and bringing additional cotton out for the purpose of charring once you get that first emergency fire doesn't pass critical thinking right if you're carrying this you shouldn't be carrying it empty 
if you're you want to use char cloth make that in your garage back home fill it in this tin carry it out with you to the field and then as that depletes you can replenish it with natural material so that's kind of the way i think about this but in this case this tin is empty so i've either used up my char supply or i need to produce some off the landscape using this tin it doesn't make sense to me to sacrifice clothing or equipment you know that cotton material to char when I have natural material available that chars and works just as good as char cloth does. Uh, in this case, this is some um, punk wood, also known as punk. And really what that is, is decomposing sap wood that kind of feels almost like a foam. It's so lightweight uh, and it feels a little bit spongy when you squeeze it, right? And there's still some hard spots in here, but for the most part, this is really lightweight punk wood and this chars up really nice just like a cotton wood so when we're creating char what we're doing is putting some natural material in a container that we can close off so i'm going to loosely pack this in there i don't want to make it too tight because i want all of it to be able to be cooked if you will and then i'm going to put the lid on that so the initial fire that I make, if you think about the fire triangle, the initial fire I make becomes the heat source. My fuel is inside the tin in the form of this punk wood, and I'm taking away the air and creating an anaerobic environment so that it doesn't combust. I've taken away one leg of that fire triangle. What that does is it pushes out all of the impurities from that material, and what you're left with is basically I won't say pure carbon, but almost pure carbon that has already been charred. And once you cool it off and then take it, which takes away the heat version, the heat portion of the fire triangle, then you can open it up and you're left with good charred material. I can use that to make my next fire rather easily just by adding heat again in the presence of air. So it's kind of a manipulation of the fire triangle to create this substance. So that's what we're gonna do with that. But I wanna get my first fire going really quickly. Put that on a platform, just pull this down over top, and let that heat get transferred. When you're making a fire, you wanna arrange your fuel in kind of a chaotic fashion. It was because fire loves chaos, fire loves to climb. So when the fire, the flames, actually reach above the last bit of fuel that you put on there, you're ready to add more fuel. So this is getting there. So right now it's drying out that wood, it's bringing it up to temperature to where it'll off gas and the gas is actually what is combusting. Now I'm above the level of the last bit of fuel that I put on there. So I'm gonna add some more fuel. And I don't have to add one or two sticks at a time, all right? I can place those on there loosely and give it time to climb up and allow that to combust. Now while this is going, because I want to maximize the amount of time that this is in there, I'm going to go ahead and place this tin inside the fire and start cooking it. Now there's a lot of things that you'll read that say that you, know, you need to poke a small pinhole in the container uh, and I haven't found that to be the case. Uh, these tins don't fit exactly airtight so as that heat is pushing that out then all of the gases can still escape you're fine uh, and because it's being heated and all that's being pushed out of that environment no air is going back in you don't have to worry about air getting back into the container unless the lid comes off or it's not getting hot enough uh, so the pinhole in the lid is not necessary unless you have a screw top lid which i have some of those and i'll poke a hole in those because when you screw those tight those do become rather airtight uh, so that's when it's necessary but most people char in an altoid style uh, hinged tin the actual air holes where those hinges are is enough to let the gas escape so you don't need to put a hole in those either once this gets going i'm going to keep adding fuel and i'm going to cook this if i've got dry punk wood like i have here it typically takes about 10 or 15 minutes to cook. You can char punk wood, a natural material that's wet, but what has to happen first is you have to evaporate all that moisture out, get the material to where it's dry inside the container, 
then it'll start the process of cooking and charring. And it's changing on me. That'll start the process of cooking and charring. So all that happens is it takes more fuel to get it to that level, if that's what's going on. I'm gonna add a little more fuel to the back side here. So I'm looking for about 15 minutes of cook time on that container. And another thing is, you know, there's no such thing as overcooking char. The only thing you could really do is undercook char. So you take it out and it's not completely black. That means it didn't cook long enough. Uh, but overcooking it is not a thing. So you can really throw that in there and kind of forget about it. So uh, overcooking char is not a thing. So we've had about 10 to 15 minutes of heat on this. This has died down to basically nothing but coals. And there's still a lot of heat happening in here. But for the most part, the flame is gone. As long as it's been 10 to 15 minutes for a dry natural material, you're probably good and you need to cool that down. So I'll take it out of the coals, making sure that I don't open it, because at any time if I reintroduce air into this mix right now, I've completed the fire triangle and it'll just burn right up. I'm going to take those out of the coals and move them away from the fire so that it can cool. So now that this is cool to the touch, the heat has now been removed from the fire triangle. So now I can reintroduce air and take a look at what I have. And this char looks great. It's completely black. It's very light, fluffy, and delicate. So what I can do with that, and what I like to do is check and test my char while I still have a coal bed. I don't wanna let this go out and go to bed for the night, wake up in the morning to find out that my char hasn't been proven. It's what I, what I consider proven char. And so what I'm going to use this for, this is going to work great for any resource that I have as far as an ignition source. It works great with a lighter, it works great with matches, uh, ferrocerium rod, it works great with solar. Uh, flint and steel, this will actually accept that cooler spark from traditional flint and steel where you're taking a rock and banging it against high carbon steel. What I'm going to use it for in this case, because I have a lighter here, is conservation of this resource. The fuel is kind of the limited resource that's in this lighter. The ferrocerium rod that is in here is actually a more durable resource. You can find lighters all the time that'll be out of fuel, but they'll still spark. So I create that kind of artificial you know, situation by putting this zip tie up here. So that protects the lever from being depressed, the button from being depressed in my pocket, uh, and keeps fuel from leaking out. Plus it also allows me to cut off that gas supply, the fuel supply, conserve that, and still get the spark. So with that, I take a piece of char, and right on the edge, I can take those sparks without using any of my fuel, direct those sparks onto the char, And without using any fuel out of my lighter, I can take that char, place it inside a tinder bundle, and now I'm using that char as my heat source, and I'm transferring the heat from that charred material to this tinder bundle. So that is what I'll use for my next fire. I'm kind of watching the wind here because I don't want the smoke in my face. You can whip it around if you need to. Introduce some more air into that mix. And I can take that and place that in my next fire leg. And it took zero fuel out of this limited resource that I'm carrying. And this is probably one of the most important resources that you're carrying in an emergency. So knowing how to conserve this resource or even how to use a, a lighter that you found on the side of the road without fuel because it still has that ability to spark 
Char is something that allows your next fire to happen that much easier, no matter what your ignition source is. So every time you have a fire, if you don't have char, you need to char material with that fire.